Call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Rankin. Here. Vice Mayor Walters is absent. Councilmember Woolrich. Here. Councilmember Hawkins. Here. Councilmember Galeen. Here. Councilmember Anderson. Here. Councilmember Wall. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could stand for a moment of silence and we'll go right into the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This is the first call to the public for public come on comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the town council. Council rules limit public comment to three minutes. Individual council members may respond to criticism made by those commenting, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, members of the council shall not be, shall not discuss or take action on any matter unless an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion legal action. I have two requests to speak so far. Jim to Cheetah. Please, sir. Thank you, Mayor Rankin. I don't have to say Vice Mayor Walter and uh, honorable uh, council members. My name is Jim Cheetah. I'm a resident of Florence, and I have an office on Main Street. So I've been spending considerable time on Main Street over the last uh, several years. So I would start by saying I really care for our community, and especially the traditional, what I call the traditional area. I guess it's kind of grown on me somewhat. Uh, about two weeks ago, this is a follow-up to a brief presentation I made two weeks ago to the council, and prior to that, perhaps three or four weeks ago, to the budget committee. And it has to do with Florence's vision and strategic intent. Now, some people spoke to me after I addressed the council two weeks ago and said, well, why do we need a new strategic plan? I didn't say we need a new strategic plan. I believe our strategic intent has not changed. If we do a new strategic plan and the strategic intent changes, then that's a different issue. So why do I think this is important? I'd like to elaborate a little bit. Florence is the county seat for Pinal County. And that carries, in my view, a rather important responsibility we have to kind of show the way to be an example of a successful community. Now, we've made a lot of progress. There's no question about that. But also, we had the loss of home rule. We have separated from a town manager, and we're going to choose a new one. And it's going to be quite soon. We have an important election coming up next year, not only for mayor, but also for council, and also a home rule vote. So people are wondering, what, what is next after the beautiful facilities that we've done across the street? I mean, they really are beautiful. What's the next step? So, and, by, and the last thing I'd like to say about why it's important that we have a vision and strategic intent, intent a well-defined one, is because there are various divided factions in our 
in the residents in our community regarding what is necessary to make progress. So I want to clearly state the difference between the vision and the strategic intent. The vision is what we aspire to be 10 to 20 years from now. The strategic intent is how we intend to get there, what steps we will take. It is not a new strategic plan, which could take months and cost more money. So I request, formally request, that a clear statement be made what is the strategic intent of the town of Florence toward the vision that we want to achieve? Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Next, Ruth Harrison. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I want to thank Mayor Rankin for responding so quickly and efficiently to a, a situation that required attention last Thursday. Uh, I drove past the Main Street Park in the afternoon and saw piles of garbage spread out on the ground around the brown trash container and the four blue recycling containers. Uh, I called the mayor and he said that he would have the police and public works handle it. Sure enough, the next day the ground around the containers had been cleared of trash. I am here tonight to ask you to have your staff remove the containers from that location. They are an eyesore and a health hazard, and because they attract trash dumping, they do not belong at a town park. Please have them removed from that site. Again, thank you, Mayor Rankin. Thank you, Ruth. Does any other member of the public have anything you'd like to say? Seeing no movement, I'll call, close call to the public. Item 6, Presentations. Item 6A, Presentation regarding the U.S. Supreme Court decision of Reed versus the Town of Gilbert, 135 SCT 2218, U.S. 2015, and the potential implications of the Reed case. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council, uh, Cliff Matthijs, the Town Attorney. Um, this is really a follow-up item with a little bit of a legal emphasis. Uh, Following back up from our resolution uh, that the council saw a month or so ago about lessening some of the standards related to signs, I thought it would be appropriate now just to um, go over with you, and I appreciate you giving me the time to do this, uh, some, of the, some of the background on that case, and uh, just so there's uh, some kind of public awareness of it. Um, sign codes, I won't go through all of this, but... As many of us know, there are different uh, definitions for different sign types, and our Reed case really kind of got into that, this U.S. Supreme Court case. But sign codes get into prohibition of sign types, um, what is permitted, regulate area, height, setbacks, uh, location-based, meaning what types of signs can go in what type of zoning district, um, and create rules for temporary signs. These are really kind of common elements for many sign codes throughout the country. Um, where the Reed case came into play is the First Amendment, and there are several elements in the First Amendment, but an individual's uh, rights are protected in particular from government not abridging our freedom of speech. And this Reed case got into that very uh, element of the First Amendment. Uh, there are kind of two big components, we think, for, if we're looking at things at a higher level with the First Amendment. Um, one of them is that we don't want to have, or the court doesn't like to have, government officials have unbridled discretion. Uh, and the other we'll get into in a second. But um, there are penalties, essentially, if you are wrapped up in a lawsuit, such as the one that Gilbert found itself in. And it can be attorney's fees and a long, cumbersome lawsuit. Um, so there are, there's a downside to violating the First Amendment. The one, that, the one issue under the First Amendment that's really uh, specific and relevant to the Reed case is this idea of having a regulation that is content neutral. Um, the court has basically said, through all the various district courts, but the U.S. Supreme Court um, has had, quite frankly, different tests under the First Amendment for different types of speech. 
And the basic idea here is that the sign itself, the regulation of the sign, shouldn't discriminate based on what is written in the sign. So there cannot be discrimination based on the content of the sign. Um, the court, the U.S. Supreme Court and the, and the lower courts, when they look at a regulation that the government adopts and they apply the First Amendment, they essentially have two different types of standards that they can apply to the regulation. The first type is this intermediate scrutiny standard, and that just requires that the government has the burden to show that its regulation, in this case a sign code regulation, has to be narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest. It also has to leave open other channels for communication. If your regulation happens to fall under the intermediate scrutiny test, you're more likely going to survive that that challenge or that review by the court. If your regulation happens to fall under this other test, the strict scrutiny test, it's likely that your regulation will be fatal constitutionally. Um, that's where Gilbert found itself in the Reed case. The court applied uh, strict scrutiny because it said that the regulation they had there was based on content. So if you're going to survive the strict scrutiny test that the court applies, the reason for the regulation has to be compelling and it has to be narrowly tailored. But like I said, uh, even if that's the case, even if you have a good reason or what you may think is a compelling reason as a government, likely if the court decides to apply this level of scrutiny, you're going to lose. Um, really the goal uh, with the rewrite that town is considering and working on is to keep the regulations content neutral and obviously be cognizant of the First Amendment restrictions and limit our discretion when we're reviewing applications. Um, to put it in context, the Reed case, and probably many people saw the background on this case, but it was a community church that didn't have a lot of resources located in the town of Gilbert. and. Uh, the church would put up temporary signs that advertised the services um, and they would do it typically on a Saturday and then take the signs down on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, the town there had uh, enforcement with the church on several occasions and felt that the signs were either staying up too long or weren't having the, right, the correct information that was required under the code on their signs. Um, so the, the, to avoid further um, charges, potential criminal charges, the church uh, sued the town in 2007. The case went up and down procedurally and, and finally was decided in 2015. So that gives you a good indication of what happens when you get into some protracted constitutional uh, litigation. But the nine justices all agreed that in that case, the regulation was content-based, uh, and it was content-based on its face. And really, the, I put the bullets out here, the primary issue that the court had was that they'd broken down, as most sign codes do throughout the country, the town had broken down their regulations on the type of sign, and they, they applied restrictions related to that type of sign. What the court did not like is, for example, ideological signs were signs that were basically if someone wanted to present an idea, um, th that type of sign could be a certain size and really there was no limit on the number of signs you could place out in public and there was no time limit on how long it had to stay up. Political signs were basically defined as a sign that influences the outcome of an election and those signs had to be smaller and could go up only for certain time periods and then under their code, as in, what was applied to the church in this case was the, the temporary directional signs, which were signs that advertised an event by a nonprofit. And the, what the court didn't like was that those signs um, had different restrictions and, and even less protection uh, than the other categories. <clears throat> so, you know, the, as I was saying a little bit earlier, the, the idea is that if, if we try and create a code that is content neutral, um, 
you focus more on issues like size, building materials, lighting, whether it's portable. Um, there are some clues that the court gave, and incidentally, it's a decision that it has a majority opinion, but there are really four different in the case. Um, and the judges, the justices all agreed on what d the decision would be, that they would say that this was an unconstitutional regulation, but they didn't all agree on the rationale. Um, and the criticism from the concurrence opinions is basically that the majority went too far in their majority decision. And the majority of the case, the justices tried to kind of set a hard line rule. Well, there are some good, we would hope, some good indications from the Alito concurrence um, giving us some guidelines about what we might be able to put in a regulation. And um, this is a list of, of what uh, Justice Alito uh, was referring to, uh, regulating size and location and making regulations that distinguish between lighted versus unlighted, messages where the copy changes, um, putting signs on public versus private property, placing signs commercial property on versus residential property or commercial districts versus residential districts, on-premises and off-premises signs. That's a concept related to billboards. Um, if you have an advertisement for something that isn't at the location of the sign, that, but it advertises something somewhere else, it's an off-premise sign. Um, the number of signs, and actually the last bullet, or the second to last bullet on time restrictions for one-time event, it's interesting that this concurrence, and this shows you some of the confusion I think that towns will have throughout the country. The majority decision mentioned, or the Alito concurrence mentions that we can look at things, uh, have time restrictions if it's a one-time event sign, but the whole point of the underlying litigation dispute was the fact that these were signs for a, a one-time event that would happen every week. So it's kind of ironic that um, the court said, well, your regulation is unconstitutional, and then three of the other judges in a concurrence say, well, go ahead and regulate it. By <laughs> so it, it leaves it a little confusing, to say the least. Um, and then, of course, a safe territory constitutionally is go our government signs that get into um, you know, directions for your historical district or historical museum, traffic regulations, safety signs um, of that nature. So, you know, as I said, the, the, I think there's a lot of chatter uh, throughout the country and in Arizona and different lawyers and different organizations, uh, sign associations have different viewpoints on how seriously to take this case, but um, there certainly is a significant um, push, I think, around the country for people to review their sign codes. It sounded like this is an opportunity for the town here to not only attempt to address these constitutional issues, but maybe make some other changes in the process. Uh, so with that in mind, the planning department, uh, the staff, we're working on uh, preparing a new sign code and working on that process. Um, we've jump-started with some internal meetings and uh, looking at some various uh, draft codes from other locations and uh, working from those. Um, and of course, we have the resolution to lessen the enforcement while we're working on uh, that rewrite. So again, thank you for letting me get up here and speak about uh, constitutional law. It's always exciting. Uh, and if you don't have any, if you have any questions, I can try and answer them. Did you remember the council had a question? Uh, yes, I sir. noticed in uh, minutes from a previous meeting that it was suggested that there would be uh, citizen input on the proposed new sign code. Is that still in the plan? That is in the plan, and I think what we're trying to do is at this point we're creating um, kind of a minimalistic draft that we can take out with us, uh, and, but then incorporate some key stakeholders in the process um, along with the commission and the council um, so we can keep it as transparent as possible. John, uh, is the Arizona League of Town and Cities, are they providing assistance on this? 
You know, that's a good question. Uh, I actually attended a couple of different meetings on this issue, and um, the the league has had some uh, meetings and and discussions, and is is really kind of looking to the International Municipal Lawyers Association has created a draft code, a kind of an initial draft. We have Mark and I have a copy of that. Um, and quite frankly, different uh, city attorneys in Arizona are kind of taking different perspectives on the case. Um, you know, my perspective is it's a pretty far reaching case. Uh, we get some guidance from the court on what we can do. And I think quite frankly, you know, a lot of municipalities are a little bit apprehensive about having their code be the first one out of uh, the blocks. But yes, the we're, we're monitoring with the league tracking what they do and with IMLA and um, they are involved. Thank you. Good. Sound to me another situation where a lot of attorneys are going to make a lot of money off of us. Yeah, let's hope not. Well, the uh, it's just a sad situation that we're in, but we know we have to address it. I, now, what are we doing on our code as it sets today, Mark, due to this? Are we staying just let even keel, or what are we doing? Mayor, members of the council, um, yes, and I think that was uh, expressed when we did our um, quasi-moratorium memorandum a while back. Um, we're just trying to lay low on the, inf on the enforcement area unless there's health safety issues, uh, real obvious um, issues that we need to contend with. Um, and then as far as when new signs are coming in, they are getting permitted still through the current process that, that we have. So we really haven't had any, any issues yet, but we are being cautious to, to avoid that from occurring while we're working on this. This didn't address anything about the safety going down the road and being a sign blocking the view, did it? Um, if there are any signs under the current code or under future codes, if there are signs that, uh, and even in this, even this case um, uh, points out, I believe that if there are issues with signs that are presenting a hazard, those can be those can be addressed, and they need they need to be addressed. Um, so whether those are temporary signs or permanent signs, we will be watching for signs that may be in the vision triangle or put up in a manner that creates a hazard. And the. The A-frames that we have on Main Street today, they would be in compliance with our code we have today. Mayor, Mayor, members of the council, yes, the um, we did a pretty good code amendment a few years back to um, address the A-frames and the uh, banners and the promotional signs, and we are working to try and uh, incorporate that same language into the new the new code, um, just addressing again the issues that we have to, but we. Uh, we believe the A-frame program has been pretty successful. We want to do what we can to, to maintain that program. And Cliff, I, I, I reading through, or looking through your presentation and you were talking about verbiage on the sign. How does that address vulgarity? Well, the First Amendment um, does not protect obscenity, fighting words, or defamation. Um, you know, there are different levels of what probably the court would consider falls under those categories. But, um, you know, the, really the, the case didn't focus on, on that issue um, as much as, you know, and I don't think we had any, we have in our review have any big issues on our code in that respect. Um, but there is a limit to what the First Amendment will protect, and it, it does not protect. Um, as I said, obscenity, fighting words, or defamation. Good. Not yet, not until some lawyer finds out about it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item B, presentation by the Greater Florence Chamber of Commerce recognizes people's mortgage as business of the month. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Since 1998, People's Mortgage of Arizona has consistently helped families achieve the dream of a home ownership. 
The team of the Patrick and Laurie Smokey, fueled by more than a combined 35 years of experience as a lender, has tirelessly opened the door to guiding clients through the purchasing and refinancing of all types of residential real estate. Patrick and Lori are passionate about helping others find the right loan for their needs. In addition, Patrick and Lori Smokey give back to the Florence Chamber of Commerce by volunteering for monthly events. An example, first Thursday, is the greatest bartender <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> and and ca Casino Night and many others, and uh, Pat as a member of the Board of Directors. So please join me in presenting October's Business of the Month, uh, People's Mortgage, Pat and Lori, uh, Lori Smokey. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've made Florence our home now for just going on four years and we love it here. Um, Vice Mayor Walter actually was our daughter's fourth grade teacher. I don't know if Tom remembers Emily coming up to him in the L&B and asking for his autograph. <laughs> she felt he was mayor that made him a celebrity, so that's, that was great. Yeah. Uh, we do truly enjoy helping home buyers, um, helping people save money through refinancing. Uh, enjoy being a member of the community and assisting with the chamber in any way we can. So I just want to thank everybody and if you need any refinancing or purchasing, I'm certainly here to help you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was kind of embarrassing when that, <laughs> you're sitting there at dinner and uh, everybody knows you and here's this little girl walking up and says, can I have your autograph? <laughs> but after I understood what it was for and everything, I thought it was neat that kids think about us as a council as being the, the leadership that they look forward to. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Item 7, Consent Agenda. All items on the Consent Agenda will be handled by a single vote as part of the Consent Agenda, unless a council member or a member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. Item A, approval of the 2015 Ground Water Savings Agreement with Pinal County Water Augmentation Authority and Central Arizona Irrigation and Drainage District. Item B, authorization to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with Pinal County for election services. Item C, approval of the donation of four Panasonic Toughbook computers to the City of Globe Fire Department. Item D, authorization or approval of the resignation of Billy Joe Garcia from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Item E, approval of the resignation of Bruce Finstermaker from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Item F, approval of the September 8th and September 14th, 2015 Council Minutes. Item G, receive and file the following Board and Commission Minutes. The July 22nd and September 16th, 2015 Historic District Advisory Commission Minutes. The July 15th, 2015 Library Advisory Board Minutes. And the August 27th, 2015 Parks and Recreation Advisory Board Minutes. Mayor, members of council, that is your consent agenda this evening. Does any member of the council have anything they'd like taken off the zone or the consent agenda? I'd like to take item A off. Okay, item A. Any others? Does any member of the audience have anything they'd like taken off the consent agenda discussed? Seeing no movement, I call for a motion. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda, except for item A. I'll second. We have a motion and second to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item A. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item A. Karen? I'm sorry. I. There's an alphabet soup on this on this item, and I just want to make sure I understand the the process that it goes through. Is the bottom line that we're going to pay seventy eight dollars for two thousand and forty eight acre feet of water? Uh, Councilperson Wall, I'll take the question if you don't mind. Uh, yes, that's that's true. That's the capital cost associated with acquiring cap water through our agree agreement with uh, CAP, which is a 100-year agreement. Uh, the Central Arizona Irrigation Drainage District is basically the agent or subcontract to handle that arrangement. So this is something we budget for every year? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. Any other question concerning item A? 
Need a motion? I make a motion that we approve item A. I'll second. We have a motion and second to approve consent item A. Any other discussion? Call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 8, unfinished business. Item 8A, ordinance number 640-15. Discussion approval, disapproval of an ordinance of the town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, approving a zone change on 0.36 acres from neighborhood multifamily zoning district to highway business commercial zoning district. APN 200-47-001B. First reading was held on October 5th, 2015. Anything new on this, Mark? Mayor Council, I have nothing new to present tonight, but I am here to answer any questions you may have. I think we've all heard it. Does anybody have any other questions, Mark? No. Do we need a motion? Make a motion. We we pass ordinance number 640-15. A second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 640-15. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 9, new business. A. Discussion approval disapproval of approving task orders number 7, 9, and 10 with Waterworks Engineering for design and upgrades to the booster pump station Northern Area Pressure Zone within Florence Gardens and replacer of bo booster pump at well number 5 for a total cost of not to exceed $261,575. Mr. Costa, will you please present? Well, Mayor Rankin, um, Town Council, basically uh, we have uh, three task orders here uh, that we'd like to award to our uh, uh, master professional services contractor, uh, professional engineer, Waterworks Incorporated. And basically the reason is to do some uh, retrofits on some of the projects that we have. Uh, the first order is task order number seven. This includes the replacement of the two booster pumps at well number five. A little history on the pumps. These pumps are 28 years old. They'd be rewound uh, probably a couple times each. Recently, uh, in May and June of this year, the, uh, the uh, painter that was going to paint it uh, was water pressuring it, and uh, it, there was cans or the pump housings were severely pitted and blew a hole in one of them. Uh, one pump is, is not operational, <coughs> and the other pump is operating at 60% capacity. In addition to that, we'd like to replace the sand separator, which is also 28 years old. And these, are, can, these dates are known by the dates on the uh, labels on each of the pumps and the sand separator, separator itself. We also want to afford the uh, entire site lighting protection. This is done through a lighting rod that was placed on a tower and a ground grid throughout the facility. Recently, we were struck by lightning, at least in my tenure here. This has been the third time. Uh, in addition to that, we will do the uh, skater system to tie into the, all the other water wells in our remote computers. Uh, the piping header system throughout the yard will be uh, 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 rearranged in order to accommodate the booster pumps and also to tie in the water transmission main, now a distribution main that was recently installed from well number four to well number five to provide additional water or make up water, not make up water, but uh, additional water in case of uh, redundancy to the, the two water storage tanks at well number five. It was never tied in before. It was meant to be a fill line and was never tied in. It was tied into a small line on Adamsville. Our intent in accordance with the Adamsville water and the roadway project is to make that tie in on Adamsville with a new 12 inch line. So basically that sums up the project on task order number seven. Are, are there any questions on task order number seven? We all, these are under the, uh, the water tower down on South Main Street. Those are the pumps under there. Is that correct, Wayne? That's correct. And, the, and back the last, uh, we, we had a uh, CIP U65 in which we wanted to replace them back in 
2013-14, but all that was done at that time was basically packing seals was applied around the uh, shaft of the of the pump, and uh, and and that prevents most of the leakage. Uh, now it's time to uh, get rid of the pumps. They're 28 years old again. Mm -hmm. Typically, I think a the life cycle of a similar pump would be about 15 years. Our engineers here, if you have any specific questions in regards to the technical capabilities of any of the pumps. John? I have, yeah, I have some questions. Why did we, get, why did we wait so long? Um, typically, we were, what we were doing, again, the pumps were rewound, the motors were rewound a couple of times each. The cans were painted until the uh, water pressure was... Uh, um, deteriorated the can in May and June. Both pumps were operating at that time, and that uh, pressure de degraded the pump so that we couldn't use it anymore. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, replacement costs, and uh, I couldn't tell you why it wasn't replaced 10 years ago. I could only tell you that we identified it as a potential replacement in 2011 in accordance with Capital Improvement Project U65, and uh, Adam Lee requested that it be replaced in 2013-14 fiscal year. And the, again, the only thing that was replaced was the packing seals. I just find it really uh, concerning that uh, we allow a critical part of our support service here, you know, the water supply of the town, to uh, come to this level of deterioration. I mean, it's just unacceptable, really. We need to keep our water supplies of all things in top-notch order. Do we have this at other places in town, uh, other pumps? No, the, typically uh, we just recently replaced the uh, ones at uh, well number four. We placed those booster pumps. There's still one more booster pump that should be installed at that location. And typically, as you see in task order number nine or ten, the one we're replacing the uh, two higher capacity booster pumps at the north tank and recently replaced the entire booster pump systems up there. Uh, you, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, and you did point out that over the years, to save money rather than buying brand new pumps, we did have those rewound and brought up to code so that's correct it wasn't like we were ignoring it we were we were just trying to use our money in a prudent fashion i felt that's 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 correct uh, councilman hawkins and in that of course we typically call on coolidge engine and pump to come over and uh, rewound the pipes and when we had the lightning strike we had them come over and uh, send out a, give us a replacement pump while they repaired the other pump so we, we, I think we're conscious on that. Um, we're conscious of that. Well, I just want people to know that we are on top of our water system. I mean, we do take care of it well, <laughs> as best we can. I mean, looking at the pumps, they look okay. It's the, uh, you know, the motors look okay. It's 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 below the motors where all the deterioration is. It looks like the leakage is, and I would think that well, somebody would have noticed this leakage. Lisa, uh, when did uh, those are those are those are the original? That's the original base, right? That's correct. Yeah, and how old is that? Twenty-eight years old. Yeah, it's almost thirty years old, and iron will rust. I mean, it's just the nature of it. <laughs> Lisa, when did uh, I bring this to your attention? You remember? I do not. I, I recall it being brought to my attention when I went on a tour of the facilities with um, Councilmember Wall. I think it was right after you came back on board, Wayne. Yeah, we went in uh, early August, around August of this, this year. Uh, and I forget what we were up there for, what I was up there for. I don't know if I stopped by to see some of the public works guys who were out there working. Actually, I think we were on a, a, a tour of the infrastructure with Council Person Wall, if I recall correctly. No, that was before then, because I brought that to your attention, or to Lisa's attention, uh, right after you took over, you know, or you assumed the duties of interim manager. 
And okay. yeah, to, to me, John, it's the same thing is, is that uh, it should have been taken care of years ago. Rust doesn't occur like that overnight. Yeah. Well, I applaud uh, But there was, no, uh, the, there was no contamination to the water supply going to the citizens. But well, I, I applaud the uh, public works for taking care of this. I really do. I'm just hoping that this doesn't happen again. Okay. Thank you. Items 9 and 10, Wayne. Item 9 has to do with the installation of uh, basically upgrading the two booster pumps at uh, North Tank uh, Reservoir and Booster Pump Project, which was recently a new uh, 560,000 water gallon tank was installed. At that point in time, uh, the water design report showed that we should have two pressure zones in North Florence, one north and one south of Arizona Boulevard. Uh, the, uh, what occurred is that the, uh, the uh, additional stipulations in the water design report were stipulated that two pressure relief valves also be installed, a loop system also be installed uh, during the installation of the north tank. This was not done. So that's what we're doing now is replacing two of the booster pumps, installing a 1,200 linear foot uh, loop water line, and that will serve the uh, increase the pressure back up to uh, a legitimate amount of 60 psi where it's operating at 40 psi at this point in time the next future project which is would be ongoing would be to analyze the uh, balance of the water lines just below arizona boulevard which consists of two inch and four inch lines and provide loop water systems throughout that area uh, that will allow us to uh, put in some additional fire hydrants between Cochise and Arizona Boulevard and also to provide sufficient capacity, basically a six inch water line at a minimum, to have those additional uh, fire hydrants. So basically, task order number nine is to upgrade the two booster pumps, uh, and that will be done just by replacing the volutes, which houses the impeller, which increases the pe uh, pressure. Uh, do some miscellaneous yard piping, uh, provide lighting protection up in that area again. There's basically no lighting rods at the north tank, and we have cell towers up there, two water tanks, and also uh, the uh, installation of two uh, PRV stations throughout the loop water system. So that's basically Tesco with number nine. Is there any questions on Tesco with number nine? Combining that with 10, we'll wait until you get through at 10. Yes, I, uh, I did combine that with 10. Did you Sorry. combine them? The, do you think that this is going to address the majority of the situation with low pressure up there in, in the majority of areas of Florence Gardens? A vast majority. I think it will go uh, about 95%. Just look, one little section below Arizona Avenue, um, Arizona Boulevard, could be problematic, and that's because in that area there are many two and four inch lines and we need to loop that system so we'll be looking at that through modeling and determine what's the best avenue to tie in that system to allow that better pressure up there and more than likely we'll install a uh, major water line project with replacement of the four and two inch lines with a six inch line some of those lines have been in a long time haven't they that's correct sir since world war ii uh Yes, Long but uh, up in that area probably since, uh, you know, 73, anyway. Right. Conkle put in a bunch of them, I think. Any members of the council have any questions? You need a motion? Make a motion to approve task orders number 7, 9, and 10 with Waterworks Engineers for design of upgrades to the booster pump station, northern area pressure zones within Florence Gardens, and replacement of booster pumps at well number 5. Second. We have a motion and second to approve task orders number 7, 9, and 10 with Waterworks Engineers. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Get to work. Mm -hmm. uh, 
have you all have Lisa's report in front of you. Do you have any questions? Yes, uh, I was wondering on the uh, territorial square RFP, RFP, the ten acres up there. Is that has that already been brought up out of the floodplain, or are we going to have to bring yeah. more dirt up? That is up out of the floodplain, and what we're doing is we're drafting an RFP. It's going to be brought back to you before we let it, and we'll make sure that council members see it, are comfortable with it before we try to uh, advertise it and let it go. But it is um, the remaining area that's out, it, that, that we have brought up within the floodplain. Okay, thank you. That's good. That's That's all I had. Yeah, yeah the member of the council have any questions, at least to report? I'll just say that you also note that there is a new budget calendar that includes updated dates. Added another column in when you see we get off track. I'm showing you what our original estimated dates were going to be and where we're backed up. We have to meet somewhere in the middle. So at a certain point, we are going to have to probably have more meetings than less. More meetings than last year? Yes. Uh, kids. <laughs> That's always good news. Huh? Anything else? Call to the public, second call to the public for matters here that we might be addressing for you. Move forward. Mayor and Council, Ruth Harrison, Florence, Arizona. Yeah. Um, about the requests for proposals uh, for the Territory Square Development Project, um, I'd like to suggest that the town focus on the existing downtown Florence area and Florence Gardens um, to focus on the infrastructure above ground and below ground uh, to try to save historic buildings, to bring in restaurants to existing buildings. There are some in town that would accommodate uh, uh, restaurants very nicely. To develop the Greenway Project for the existing downtown area. The Greenway Project was first developed in 2005. Uh, I think you all have a copy because I think I sent one to you. Um, and I'd like you to focus on that to postpone building recreational facilities now and to, uh, again, focus on improving the quality of life in downtown Florence. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Seeing none, I'll close call to the public, call the council. Bill? I have nothing. Karen? Larry? No. John? Uh, yes, I'd like to thank uh, uh, the town staff for the meeting out in uh, my neighborhood last week for the CFD. Uh, that was an excellent meeting. I think that uh, explained uh, a lot about CFDs and, and where the money comes from and where it was going. Had some very positive comments and the few people that were there. Thank you very much. Becky? Yes. I'd like to compliment the library staff and the um, um, Parks and Recreation Division, Brian, on Saturday's movie for the children. It was very well attended. In fact, it was jam-packed, and they were saying they may have to open up another room next time. I was amazed, actually. I had four of my uh, grandchildren and niece and nephews uh, down. Um, and so they were very impressed. They came from California you know, with our facility. So uh, thank you very much for that. I think that uh, the town is doing a pretty good job on where we're going. Jim, I, I appreciate the comments you made towards us. Uh, Ruth, I appreciate you didn't have to thank me for it. That's just part of our job to bring when we have uh, issues brought to us by citizens, we try to take care of them. Uh, and I would like to, I'd like to take this time to, you know, she's going to get mad at me, but I'd like to publicly thank Lisa Garcia, our interim town manager, for all the work she's put in to her job as interim town manager, along with her clerk duties, along with keeping us up in line on the upcoming elections, working with all the, the committees. We laughed a little bit a little while ago about the more meetings we're going to have. 
Uh, I know Lisa wants to, to get a manager on board, so she may not have to attend all those meetings. But Lisa, from me, myself, and for the council, thank you very much for the job you're doing for us. We really appreciate it. And uh, but if we find some extra money, we might give you a little raise. Okay. Here, here. Need a motion? Make, Make a, motion a move. To executive session. Second. We have a motion and second to adjourn to executive session. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries.